Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. And in the last episode, we had some fun writing some assembly code to draw some pixels to the screen in our C++ box. Now, in this episode, I'm going to enhance the C++ box source so that I have a random data device that we can read from during emulation time. So I'm going to start by going into this memory map here. And this memory map file gives us the location of all of the things in memory. And so we didn't play with this in the last code, but we can change the width and the height of the screen bits per pixel that's not implemented yet but we can modify some of these things and we can um, have access to like a real kind of memory map being built up for this thing and we have down here where the default screen buffer is and it is two megabytes from the top so like i said before it's got 10 megabytes total the screen buffer starts at eight megabytes that's two megabytes from the top of the ramp so that worked exactly as we expected it to but we're going to add a new memory location here and so this screen buffer one this is the one that says what is the current screen buffer so it is possible actually to write to this memory location and change which screen buffer that you are currently displaying if you wanted to play around and do double buffering kind of techniques as you are having fun learning how to do kind of hardware related code in C++ and ARM assembly. But for this example here, I want to add a random device. And it's going to be 32 bits. I want to make it 4 bytes wide. And it's going to start at the last place plus 4. So the last one started at register start area. And that was here. That's going to be that should be 4 bytes past the last register, which is also 32 bits. And this is going to be 32-bit pointer to, no, not 32-bit pointer, 32 bits of random data. That's all that the only guarantee we're going to make here. So I have now created this here in my memory map file. I'm going to go over here. and. This should be pretty straightforward. I already have a random device set up, and that is used for showing the static. If you saw before when you don't have a valid program running, then you see static on the screen. So this random device is already here, and it is for generating bytes of data. I want to create four bytes of data. I have a random device. Um, let's see if we can put it to use. So I have a for loop here that goes through and it does each uh, operation that needs to be executed in the CPU emulator while there is time remaining for the current frame. So I'm trying really hard to emulate 30 million instructions per second and locking it at 30 frames per second. So I hopefully have enough time in here and let's go ahead and see if we do to write some random data to a random device. And let's do that after the instruction is executed. Ultimately, this may end up proving to be a mistake to do this as four separate operations, but we're going to see what we get out of it. Actually, on second thought, instead of writing this as four bytes as once, let's go ahead and create a new distribution that gives us 32 bits. Now that should work. Let's give this a quick compile.
All right, now we actually have one other place where this needs to be done because we have a single step mode. So this gives us one other thing to potentially refactor here because right now the single step code is starting to look a little bit redundant. But on the single step mode here, I need to also update that random memory location before updating to the display. So, all right, I'm going to launch this with an example of these rotating colors that I currently have set up. So this may have had a significant performance impact on our emulation, but we're going to go ahead and test it and see if we got what we wanted before we concern ourselves much more with this. Okay, there I go. I think we are seeing what we wanted to see. I'm getting now a random noise on the green channel of each pixel on each frame being updated by reading from this random memory location that we had just set up. So that is location 10, which I believe is right. Let's go ahead and put this back on a slightly different location and see if it's no longer... Yeah, that's no longer random. Location 10 is where that first byte of random noise is coming from, and that is going just onto the green channel here. So that was kind of fun. We added this. I'm going to have to play with the performance implications of it a little bit, but hopefully this was a little bit of an interesting diversion and from our normal C++ weekly kind of content, and I hope you liked this episode.